Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a boxed cooler which isn't something that really happens very often, especially with right over here having this AIO on my test bench now. But today we're taking a look at the boxed cooler from the Ryzen 5 3600X. I believe this cooler also comes with the uh, Ryzen 5 3400G, which is the new 3000 series APU, though based on Zen Plus, not Zen 2. And the Wraith Spire cooler that comes with those CPUs has changed a little bit since the original Wraith Spire, which I actually have one of these. And you'll notice on the bottom here, we have what looks like a copper plug there. And that's actually the vapor chamber that is an integrated into this Wraith Spire cooler. But I noticed when I opened up my 3600X, there's no vapor chamber here anymore. This is now just a block of aluminum on the new Wraith Spire cooler. So presumably it doesn't perform quite as well as the original Wraith Spire. And this should actually be something fairly easy to test. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. As we get started, I do want to throw out there that if you're looking for these Ryzen processors, they're still sort of in and out of stock. I'll leave the Amazon links down below in case you want to check out to see if you can find these in stock at their MSRP prices. But now for methodology, it's going to be fairly straightforward. Unfortunately, I have no good way of controlling the temperature in this room. So all of these temperatures that you're going to see on the screen once I get done testing are going to be plus or minus two or three degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, just because the room is going to fluctuate a little bit as the AC kicks on and off to control that temperature. But it does do a pretty good job of keeping the temperature in here fairly stable. Just understand if we end up with a situation where the uh, temperatures are very close with our results, it's entirely possible that could come down to whether the AC was on and keeping the room cooler or whether it had kicked off and the room had slowly heated back up. Now with all that said, we are going to be using a graphite thermal pad as our Tim instead of a thermal paste. And the reason for that is really simple. It's something I can keep consistent across both tests. So there will be no variability there whatsoever. Now we are going to be testing with the rise and 5 3600X, I'll go ahead and put the exact specs that I'm running this at right now because it does have a custom overclock and I can't remember off the top of my head what I have the voltage and all that at right now, but I'll go ahead and throw that on screen. And just for kicks, we're also gonna test out this AIO. This is the Corsair H100 IV2, though it does have a pair of scythe fans on it because I'm trying to keep it a little bit quieter since it's on the test bench. So I'll go ahead and test that cooler just because it's already ready to go, also with the thermal pad. Now this comparison ended up being a little bit more in depth than I had originally thought it would and that actually comes down to the fans on the Wraith Spire coolers. But to get us started off with setting the standard fan preset on the ASUS motherboard here, obviously the H100 IV2 came out with the clear win here. But interestingly, at least I thought it was very interesting, was the old Wraith Spire cooler with the copper core and with that vapor chamber came out behind the new Wraith Spire. So I decided to take a little bit more of a deep look at that. Now, when I saw those initial numbers, I sort of figured it came down to fan speed. So when I locked both of these heat sinks at 2000 RPM, with the fan that is locked at 2000 RPM, we saw the old Wraith Spire actually does come out as the winner here. And that again comes down to that vapor chamber with the copper core there that does just conduct heat away from that uh, chip a little bit quicker. So when you account for fan speed, because the fan design itself is pretty much identical, it's just the fan speed that's a little bit different. The old Wraith Spire cooler does come out on top, but still not the full story here. When you then let both fans run at completely full speeds, it's interesting that the uh, 3000 RPMs that the new one actually pulls versus the roughly 2000 RPM max on the old Wraith Spire cooler does give us a clear win for the new Wraith Spire cooler. Though, just like any time that you speed up any fans in your system, you can definitely hear the difference with the old Wraith Spire cooler running at full speed versus the new one running at full speed. And you can hear the difference here. So it is conclusion time. Obviously, it is sometimes gonna be worth it to invest in a really nice cooler like this AIO here. That will cost quite a bit of extra money though. If you are stuck between choosing from one of the two Wraith Spire coolers, it's actually not as clear cut as I figured it would be because AMD has made the fan on the new Wraith Spire run at about a thousand RPMs more than the old Wraith Spire cooler. So if you are upgrading from an older chip and you were using your old Wraith Spire cooler, there's really not much of a reason to upgrade or downgrade, depends how you look at it, 
to the new Wraith Spire cooler because while you are gaining a little bit of temperature headroom with the new one, you are also sacrificing a little bit on the noise performance because this one will be significantly louder, at least when it's running at full tilt compared to the old Wraith Spire cooler, which even though did see slightly higher temperatures at the standard fan curve, you can always adjust that, customize that a little bit to get this thing to run a little bit faster in that standard fan curve because under standard conditions, even at full load, it wasn't necessarily running at full bore all of the time. It was slowly ramping up. Now, if you do also have both these coolers, one of the other things you could do is create the hybrid and pulling off the fan from the old, or rather the new heat sink and putting it onto the older heat sink so you get a faster fan while still maintaining the advantage of having the copper core there with that vapor chamber. So it's really not going to result in much of a difference regardless of which way you go. The Ray Spire cooler, the brand new one, is still a nice cooler, especially coming in the box at a time when Intel still either includes really, really cheap coolers or they just don't include them at all. So it's still a really nice feature of these Ryzen chips. It's just not quite as nice as the older one, especially when you consider the noise performance of it. But I do want to know what you guys think. Are you still using these in-box coolers that come with these CPUs? Or have you sort of moved on to the life of just getting aftermarket coolers, whether that be water coolers or just ones like these scythe coolers that I've been reviewing quite a bit recently? And if you just heard that bell, that's actually my dog asking to go out. So I'm going to go take care of him. So if you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things. There are some links in the description down below in case you're looking for these Ryzen CPUs. And of course, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.